Um, I don't know, but we're live now. So, um, hello world. I'm Jeremy. Awesome. This is Aaron. And uh, today we're going to be discussing in it, kind of an introduction to JavaScript. Um, Aaron, could you um, could you give us a little bit of intro of uh, kind of what you're looking to get out of this session? Yeah, um, I I've been doing web design for a couple a couple years. Stuff like uh, WordPress and Squarespace and HTML and CSS basic sites. Um, and I have been listening a lot to the the web design community. It seems like JavaScript is is a really massive part of all the really cool applications that are being built these days. And I have a general idea of how it works. I've taken like some intro to programming classes, uh, like on uh, Code Academy and Code School and all that stuff. Um, but I I'm still it's still a little bit foggy the implement, implementation side of it maybe, or the code writing side of it maybe, or just how it all works. So I, I, uh, I noticed that you had uh, done some work in JavaScript, so uh, I kind of just want to see the, the work that you've done and, and why you made some of the choices you made and then how you, actually, how you actually built that into the websites or the web applications that you were making. Um, yeah. So okay. just kind of a just kind of a, a beginner to in, intermediate level overview of someone who, you know, has a has a grasp on on uh, on the basics of programming, but doesn't really doesn't really know that much about it. Okay. Um. So generally speaking, you would use JavaScript on a page to add interactivity. Uh, that's gotten sl that gotten slightly more confusing over the years because with uh, newer versions of CSS, you know, CSS three. Um, you know, you can have things where you hover something and, you know, there's an interaction. So you mm -hmm. can have, like, little animations and, you know, style change, like, pretty simple style changes based on interactions, interactions with CSS. But JavaScript is what kind of brings uh, an application or a website to life. So if you wanted to have a form that would, you know, validate the data, you know, make sure that the name, phone number, address is correct, you can do it with JavaScript. And also you can do things like take that data and send it to the server. Um, it, the best way to think of it is that, you know, um, HTML gives you structure for a page, and CSS gives you styling, it, it, you know, it, it, it makes it look a cer certain way, and JavaScript gives it behavior. That's the, the simplest way to, to think about it. And you can't really have any sort of um, uh, functionality-driven application without interactivity. So you can have, like, an entire site, like, uh, conceivably, you could have uh, most of Wikipedia uh, without JavaScript. Wouldn't be the most modern or enjoyable experience, but you know that's just content. It just needs to be presented and look a certain way. Um, however, but if you want to like hit the search bar in Wikipedia and uh, you know have a little autocomplete stuff, or um, maybe not have the page refresh, just go out and like do a partial update of the page. That's something that would require JavaScript. So yeah, it, it kind of brings JavaScript, or it, it brings web pages to life. Cool. Yeah, I think then that's what I'm missing because I I've got the whole static thing, but um, you know I want to get into more interactive type stuff, and and just keep up with uh with what's going on in the in the web design world because there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Don't get me started on CSS animations. Yeah, CSS animations are great, and generally speaking, if you're if you're not if you're not worrying about older browsers or um, having your animations work in older browsers, you'd want to uh, utilize CSS for for your animations because it gives you better performance and it's just kind of a better separation of the layers. Uh, JavaScript for years historically has been handling animation, but um, it that's only because there wasn't a better option. You know, when you really think about it, animation. It can fall into the behavior side of things. It can also fall into the presenta presentational layer of things. Uh, but in most cases, it's it's not fully necessary for for, uh, for functionality to work. So you'd want to kind of like lump that in more with the presentational layer. Yeah. Um, JavaScript. So can you, can you um, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say. So can you uh, can you show me some examples of stuff that you've done that you really like? Sure. Uh, well, so, okay. so I've done a lot of work with animation specifically, just, just as like, you know, uh, side projects and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, I've got one thing that's kind of been like making the rounds on Twitter recently, and I'll put it in the chat and I'll also put it in the YouTube once this is uploaded. Uh, it's called Styly. 
Um, oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. That was you? Yep. Nice. So I'll just put this in the chat. Um, in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and share my screen. I've had bad luck in the past with sharing my screen, so if my oh, yeah. audio cuts <laughs> up, just kind of like wave or something. But I'm just going to try and show this real quick just so you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, share screen. Or if it'd be easier, I can pull it up on uh, in my browser, although I guess then everybody watching this wouldn't be able to see. Yeah, well, I, I think the issue is with, 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 the, with the Hangouts, um, it listens for when you're typing, and I type really loudly, and this tray that my keyboard's on it just makes a lot of sound. So basically whenever I like hit my keyboard, my, my mic shuts out. So I have to just be careful like type really quietly. Um, I think that's the problem. But anyway, so I'm going to give this a shot. Okay, doing the inception thing. So, Whoa! Yeah, I don't know why it does that. So can, can you still hear me? Yep. Okay. So just for anybody who hasn't seen this, this is just a little app, and this is pure JavaScript. Um, basically, see how, how I'm dragging everything around here and this little ball here? Mm -hmm. oh, uh, it's kind of funny that I, that I use this as an example because um, the uh, it's creating CSS code from a JavaScript animation. I don't want to necessarily get into that too much right now because I think it might confuse things, but basically you can see how there's these fairly complex interactions by just clicking and dragging and, and doing different things, right? Yeah. So this is something that would only, be, uh, stuff. would only be accomplished with JavaScript. So this is a little bit more of an advanced kind of a thing. Let me just, oops, oh boy. Now, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I can't remember which website I saw it on, but I was looking at um, some IT website. I think that they had this really cool animation of like there was a computer and there were some power lines coming out of it, and all this data was like coming out of it. Just just balls or you know I don't forget I forget what they were, but it was a really really cool animation. And I was like, uh, I was I was actually kind of wondering. I was like, is that JavaScript or just CSS animations? Um, because I've, I've read a little bit into those, but haven't implemented them yet. So CSS3 has capabilities to do very complex animations. But there comes a point where the complexity of the code for CSS would far surpass the complexity of the code for the JavaScript. Because um, I guess the best way to put it is that just because something can be done in CSS doesn't mean that it was necessarily meant to. Therefore, you have to do all sorts of like crazy syntactical hacks to make it work. Um, yeah. and in some cases, you actually have to do that because that you know, even with crazy CSS code like that, you that's the only way to get decent performance by utilizing the GPU. So that may be the case, but I would say generally for um, for really complex animations, it's almost always JavaScript, unless you know the developer is just trying to prove something. Mm -hmm. uh, because with JavaScript, like, I guess the, way, the, the, the best way to think about it is that um, you can kind of build in uh, decision-making logic. So if you have, like, if you're trying to make Pong or something, um, you would want to have the ball like bounce on top of the screen, bounce on the bottom of the screen, bounce on the paddle, and you know, back and forth again. And mm -hmm. there's, there's logic there. You know, the ball has... There, there, there's logic being run in every frame to figure out what should be computed. Um, there may be a way with CSS to get, you know, kind of a simple-ish version of Pong, but it, it's just not really meant to do that, so it would be a hack. So for something like that, where, where, where there's actual decisions being made at runtime, you'd want to use JavaScript. Okay. So like, so like, um, so I think of it as strict animation CSS would be okay for that, but if there are, like you said, if there are decisions to be made, that would need to be JavaScript. Right. I think I get the concept. So, like, balls bouncing off of walls isn't just animation, it's in reaction to, you know, the, the previous path, what happened with the paddle that it just bounced off on, that kind of stuff. Right. So. It's responding to behavior. I mean, uh, CSS's ability to, to respond to user reactions is extremely extremely limited. I think it's, like, in the past, it was just hover. I think there's a few new ways mm -hmm. to do it, like uh, maybe it's like so it's like checkboxes being checked or something. I'm not too sure about 
the you know the interactive capabilities capabilities of CSS, but in any case, it's way more limited than JavaScript. Like with JavaScript, you can listen to specific events. You can listen to a ma uh, a mouse move event or a key down event, um, network events, like anything that you'd be interested in. You know, responding to with behavior or animation or whatever. Um, uh, even if like you had a div over here and a div over here, and you wanted to know like if this div was interested in what this div was doing, you could build a relationship like that. It's kind of abstract, but I guess what I'm yeah. saying is that the um, uh, the possibilities for complex interactions are significantly higher with JavaScript because you can basically do anything that you want. You can you can kind of define the rules of the universe within and it's and it's within the capabilities of the browser, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, and but JavaScript uh, is used in in a lot besides uh, web browsers too, right? Yeah, so it's, it's like a programming uh, language in and of itself. All right. So for years, because JavaScript is only in the browser, so like the history of it, like it came out in Netscape in the '90s, um, and then other other browsers uh, adopted in various forms. But you know, we st today we have just kind of the singular JavaScript for the most part. Um, and uh, where I was going with that, but yeah, so people kind of relate JavaScript with the DOM, or they relate it with the browser. Like they think it's a feature of the browser, but like you said, it is just a language in the same way that C++ is just a language, or uh, PHP is just a language, or anything like that. Uh, conceptually, there's nothing that binds it to the browser. Uh, so in recent years, uh, something called Node.js has been is being is gained a lot of popularity. Have you heard of that? Oh yeah. So yeah, and, and it's it's one of those things that's like everyone tosses it around and and yeah I, I don't really understand what it does other than people build applications with it web apps yeah so have you ever used um, any other server side language like uh, Ruby or PHP or Python or anything not not in action I've I've taken basic tutorials but other than that like I haven't had a chance to use them okay work. Well, I I get like kind of the tweak size description of it is just like it's a way you know it's a program that runs on the server so you know not the client um, yeah so it gets data and you know set, gets and receives data so it's a huge oversimplification of what a server does but yeah, um, it makes sense uh, and when you think about it like at a high level the language doesn't matter you could be using C++ you could be using Ruby and you could be using JavaScript and that's what Node.js is. It's just uh, a, a server platform that uses JavaScript instead of any other language. Um, and have you uh, have you built anything with it? So I haven't built a server with with Node um, because I just I prefer to work in UI stuff and I don't like messing around with servers unless I you know I really have to. Um, yeah. But I I have used Node to do uh, little utility scripts. So one of the nice things about Node is that um, for JavaScript developers like myself, uh, you can kind of make your entire tool set JavaScript now. So in the uh, in the past, well, even the currently, a, a popular JavaScript compiler is called uh, Google Closure, which is uh, it, it just takes your JavaScript and makes it much smaller and more efficient, so you can uh, so the users can download it much uh, uh, you know much faster and also yeah, kind of yeah. runs a little bit faster. Uh, and that is written in Java, I believe. Um, and now, instead of using the, this other Java thing where I had to have like a jar sitting around in a repo, I use something called Uglify.js, which is which does pr pretty much the same thing, or at least mostly the same things, but it's written in JavaScript. So I've got a JavaScript compiler, or I, I use a JavaScript compiler written in JavaScript, which is kind of weird when you think about it, because like it could compile its own code. Not that you would, but you could. <laughs> um, yeah, right? Like... Yeah, so so I use it for a lot of utility things because uh, if if you're building a a project of any complexity, you're you're going to want to have a robust tool set to make things easier for compiling and testing and all this sort of thing. So for my various GitHub projects, uh, it's all JavaScript. It's like it the the library itself is JavaScript, but also like the compiler JavaScript and testing is all JavaScript. Like it's it's just JavaScript all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you how did you get started with learning um, JavaScript? Did you did you kind of just jump in? Did you have a background in web design first? Did you have a background in uh, 
um, like, you know, did you do it in college, or how did that how did that kind of all get started for you? So, because that's kind of where I'm at. I'm wondering, like, how do I progress in this? Well, it's kind of an interesting w uh, way how I kind of like stumbled about in my career in general. Um, so, without getting too deep into it, I like when I was a teenager, I liked making video games. So, I was using this really high level tool called RPG Maker, and then like I learned started learning better tools because uh, I wanted to make video games. And then I ended up like, I liked making hobby video games so much my own that I went to school for it. Um, mm -hmm. And I, so I majored in game programming, and I t learned things like C++ and uh, C Sharp, and I thought that interpreted languages were the devil because they're, you know, not statically typed and all this thing. Um, and then when I graduated, like, I found out that there's really not a whole lot of uh, video game jobs out there, at least not in Chicago where I was living at the time. So I'm like, oh, well, I better learn something. So I uh, started to learn web development. And so basically, like, I didn't have a job for a month after college, so I just like went to a coffee shop every day and just learned web development stuff. Learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP. Like I didn't learn them well, but you know I got started with you got, them. Yeah, you got started. Yeah, yeah. And that's that, that, that I just kind of like kept with them for a while, and I got you know better and better, and the point I became pretty comfortable with them. Uh, so it was just kind of a matter of uh, necessity for me. I just I needed to get a job, so I knew there was I knew I could find a job doing web development. Well, that that's partially why I am interested in JavaScript because I like I like being creative and making stuff. Um, and it seems like all the people I look up to that are doing really cool stuff on the internet, building things, are a lot of them are using JavaScript. So I said, oh, I want to learn how to do this too. Um, so you had you, you kind of got a, an understanding of programming in college, where because because from the from the from the hours I've spent. Learning the basics of that, I, there's a lot of concepts, um, things like variables, functions, uh, just a lot of computer programming stuff that I'm not super familiar with yet. Um, I, I got into I got into HTML, and CSS before I got into that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so would it be would it be best to maybe like make a make a side project and learn how to throw some JavaScript stuff into uh, a website maybe like start with jQuery because I've been learning a little bit about that um, and play around with that or should I try to get the basics of uh, programming I guess computer science is what they call it um, which uh, which which route would you would you say would be beneficial I mean I guess um, I could go either way if you want to get like so I guess my answer would be definitely go for the basics. I'm a strong believer in getting a really good foundation in the basics. I love jQuery, I really do, but I don't think mm -hmm. it's the best first thing to learn because I think it spoils you on a lot of ideas that um, it. Oh, can you see me? My, my my screen just cut out. Oh, you're still here. Oh, okay, I guess the hangout just kind of. Oh, anyways, um, <laughs> sometimes it does that. Uh, Definitely learn the basics because it's you're, 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 you might pick up a lot of you might get used to a lot of abstractions that bite you in the end if you're trying to become kind of a more holistic developer. And I think that's something that's really going to help you over the long term of your career uh, is to kind of have an understanding of like what programming is. Don't necessarily get caught up in computer science because I never went to school for computer science. There's a lot of computer science um, theories and concepts that I don't understand. Uh, and that's because it doesn't really come into play for what I do. That's not to say it's not useful. It's very valuable, and I have an interest in computer science. But I just, I, I just don't get excited about um, you know complexity theory and um, big O notation and you know how to optimize loops and stuff. I mean, it's important, but I just you know there, there, there there's a whole world of things you need to know to make an application, um, and. I guess it takes kind of some judgment to figure out what's most important for your needs at a given time. That was kind of abstract, but... No, it makes sense, man. Yeah. Um, well, good. I, I don't know. I was kind of like talking out of the air there, but... No, no, it's good. I, and I think there's a... Um, for anyone who's watching this, there's a book I just, just started reading um, online called Eloquent JavaScript. Have you heard of that? I've heard of it, yeah. I've heard a lot. It's a... Lot a from what I, I've read a, a, about a chapter and a half so far, and it's really good, um, and it's free. I think it's just eloquentjavascript.com. Um, 
So if anyone's in my spot and they kind of are interested in learning, uh, maybe if I, I bet if I work through that, I'll get a uh, I'll get a much deeper understanding. Yeah, I possibly even uh, be able to start building like, stuff. Kind of starting out, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, let's see if I can navigate away from you without breaking stuff. I think you should like not click too hard, like I do. <laughs> it's all about where you click, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Eloquent. I think it's just like a, you could probably do like an Amazon search for it or something. Oh, yeah. Can you still hear me or did it cut off my audio? I can hear you. It's actually got a okay, website. I'm here. It's just eloquentjavascript.net here. Yep, that's it. Yeah, and it's it's like I said, I've been reading through the the basics, a modern introduction of programming. So, um, I think I think it's gonna I think it covers kind of both the introduction of programming and also maybe through JavaScript. Yeah, and I think but it's a pretty good way. language to learn, you know, how to program. Um, mm -hmm. So my first real language was C++, and that's it, it, it. In syntactically, grammatically, it looks similar to JavaScript, but they're totally different. Um, and I guess you just have to like kind of, have, kind of have an understanding of both of them to to see why. But um, that's something where like there's a lot of memory management and you know strict typing and all that. And that can be you you have to be really motivated to learn programming to stick with that if that's your first language. Uh, if it's not if you're, if you're not totally sure it's something you want to do and you're just kind of like dipping your toes in the water with like programming in general. I would mm -hmm. say that JavaScript is a good language to start with because you can get up and running with just a few lines of code. Uh, and I think, like, for programming, I think it's it's important to have uh, some sort of visual feedback early on just so... I mean, programming is an endless negative feedback loop, right? It's basically nine times out of ten the computer's telling you you've done something wrong and it won't tell you why. Uh, so you need some form of success early on or you're just going to lose motivation really quickly. And yeah. you could have... you could make a pop-up window appear in JavaScript with one line of code. You just type alert and then pass it a string of whatever. Um, yep. And you can get decent interactions and, and, and decent results in, in, in very little code. Um, you'll grow out of that approach and you'll probably grow, uh, start looking at frameworks and libraries and all this stuff, but that's stuff that you should worry about kind of down the line. Um, yeah. I think it's just kind of important to, to understand, you know, the mental mode of programming. That makes sense, man. Uh, so, so I think that's where I'll start, and then I'll uh, I'll jump into some projects and you know try to get my feet wet doing a little bit of real programming. Awesome. Yeah, I would definitely say that uh, side projects are the best way to learn. Um, mm -hmm. I mean that like I've learned a lot in my career, like on the job experience, and you know I got a foundation in programming. Uh, in general, in college, but like, I only made stuff that I'm truly proud of, like in my free time, my personal projects, because you know you don't have to answer to anybody. You, it's, it's total creative freedom, which is great, and you're free to make mistakes and learn from them, and not worry about deadlines or anything like that. And you know, and uh, it's crucial for learning learning any skill is to like constantly question things and try and explore and see like, oh, I wonder what that is. I wonder what the, what this means, and just kind of like keep going down rabbit holes endlessly. Um, and, the, and then when you're doing that, like jump to another rabbit hole and take it down as far as you can. And it's kind of addicting, actually. But if it's something that you like, and you know, I hope that you do, then I think you'll get a lot out of it, and you'll have some useful skills to show for it. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm at. And uh, I'm just, I was looking down into the rabbit hole of JavaScript, and I'm just like, oh. This looks like fun, but maybe I should get someone to go with me. So I think. Yeah, well, the yeah. It, it's a little bit of a daunting community because everybody's always talking about like, ooh, Ember, Angular, jQuery, Backbone, you know, all these <laughs> tools, you know, all this stuff you have to know, like uh, promises, deferreds, like like all this stuff. And the thing is that there's so much of, and this is not just true of JavaScript. It's just that JavaScript is is very popular right now. So this is especially true of JavaScript. But, um, you know, it's very much trend-based. And a lot of trends don't last that long. So the libraries and tools that are out today, most of them won't be talked about in a few years from now. 
But the things that will be talked about are, you know, the standards, like the, how the language itself works. Like the language really hasn't changed in a number of years. It's evolving slowly, but, you know, what you know today of the language at, at its core isn't going to become obsolete in a few years. Um, jQuery is unusual. It, it stayed popular for a few years, and I, I think even that's kind of waning a little bit. Um, but don't get hung up on the high-level tools, uh, at least not yet. You'll know when you need them, so just kind of stick with, you know, stick with the basics, and I, I, I think that'll take you pretty far. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, we're coming up on 30 minutes. Do you want to wrap it up? Yeah. Um, if you ever want to have a follow-up session, just let me know, and... Um, yeah, I think this uh, this went pretty well. So yeah, just kind of try try and figure out something you want to do with JavaScript, or you know, just something you want to make on the web, and uh, kind of try and figure out how you go about it. And I guess we'll you'll you'll, you'll have to report back with what you started working on. I will. I definitely will. And I, and hopefully, um, I don't know. Hopefully, I'll be able to follow along with some of the other stuff that you do too. It's yeah, uh, it's a I'll, I'll really cool thing. Know. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk to you again? Definitely. Awesome. Talk to you later, and thanks a lot.